Hi everyone, we are starting a new unit, unit number five. The full title of it is Chemical Kinetics from Reaction Rates and Integrated Rate Laws to the Arrhenius Equation. And in this introductory video, I will describe chemical kinetics and what it means to measure the rates of appearance and disappearance of compounds in a chemical reaction. When you think of kinetics, think of the word speed. And it's analogous to traffic. There's some sections that are going very fast. There's some sections that are going very slow. Let us start with the term chemical kinetics, or more specifically, kinetics of a reaction. Kinetics of a chemical reaction, or just plainly reaction. When someone measures the kinetics of a reaction, they are measuring how fast a reactant disappears, Oh my goodness, my spelling. Measuring how fast a reactant disappears, or they could be measuring how fast a product appears. Measuring how fast a product appears, or they could be studying the factors, the variables that change this rate. That affect this uh, rate, rate of disappearance, rate of appearance. And when you think of rate, think of speed. When you think of kinetics, also think of speed. Let's take a look at a chemical reaction. H2. Hmm. Yeah, let's put the states. Gas plus I2 gas goes to in the forward direction 2HI gas. What have we learned so far in Gen Chem in, in total. In Gen Chem 1, right, you learn about stoichiometry when given a reaction and some values. Stoichiometry. That's the last typo I'm going to make. Stoichiometry. And what that entails sometimes is limiting reactant problems or percent yield. In Gen Chem 2, more recently, maybe you learn how to figure out the delta H, the enthalpy, or the heat of a reaction. And you could get that from the bond, associa bond association energies or the delta H of formation of each of the components. But what have we not seen yet? We don't know anything, or we haven't analyzed a reaction's rate. Rate of reaction. Let us take a look at this chemical equation and potentially graph the disappearance of the starting material H2. On the y-axis, you have concentration of H2. Okay. Everyone should know by now that the brackets mean concentration. In, particularly, in particular, in units of molarity, which is the same as moles per liter. On the x-axis, axis, we have time. And we'll go from 0 to maybe 300 seconds. And the concentration from zero to maybe uh, two molar. If we start out with H2 and we have two molar, we're definitely starting out 
up here. But how does that two molar disappear, or how does the hydrogen con get consumed with time? Well, it could go in a straight line, like this, down to zero. Okay, But more likely, the rate of disappearance is going to be faster at the beginning because the concentration is higher. So more likely, you'll have a deeper descent at the beginning, and then it starts to plateau or level out. It may not even get to zero. We know reactions are at equilibrium, and most reactions do not go 100%. Most reactions do not consume 100% of the starting material. So what's more likely is this purple line. And if we take a look at the speed, well, what are the units of speed? The units of speed, or the rate, typically is, in this case, molarity per second, because we're checking the molarity of the starting material over time. Okay. If we analyze from time zero to time, I don't know, what time is this right there? Um, that's 300, let's just say, I don't know, 20 seconds. Okay. Well, if you take the change in the molarity, it's actually going down. And over the time, which is in the positive direction, you see what we're doing? We're taking the slope, the slope of this curve between 0 and 20 seconds. You see that descent is, I don't know, let's say this is 1, this is 1.5. The descent is 0.5 molarity. So for this case, the rate from 0 to 20 seconds is the change in molarity. That's what? That's 1.5 minus 2.0 over the change in time, 20 seconds. You may have heard of uh, rise over run to get the slope. So we're doing the same thing here. The slope is negative in this case. So here's your tangent. It's hard to tell. It's right over the purple. But in this case, the slope is negative. It's going downwards. Does that make sense? Yes, because that number, the numerator, is negative also. We have 1.5 minus 2 divided by 20. So that's the rate. Not the rate of the reaction, the rate of the disappearance of the reactant. Let me write that down. So negative. 0 0.025 molarity per second is the rate for the concentration of H2. And it's negative because it's disappearing. Now, if it was the products, if we're looking at it from the pro product's point of view, the product would be increasing with time. Okay, so we're always, in this case, going forwards, reducing product. So think about, like I said, rate as a speed. For instance, if we are driving, and we know that the speed is really the distance over the time, like 65 miles per hour. In this case, the rate of the concentration of H2 is what? A molarity over time. And that 
in this case is negative 0 0.025 molarity per second. That's the rate of the concentration of H2. Now if I say what is the rate of disappearance, then that number is positive. It would be positive 0 0.025. It's just the language. The rate of disappearance, how much are they losing per time. All right? But technically this is the change in concentration over a certain amount of time. Now, in this curve, what if we analyze maybe seconds here? Let's analyze another 20 seconds. Let's measure it from, what would this be? I don't know, 180 to 200. So the same 20 second time interval, same amount of time in the interval, but at different time points. Look at the slope now. Rise over run. See, the slope is much shallower. Okay, so what would you expect that number to be? You would expect it to be less than 0 0.025. So this is uh, less steep. And therefore, the rate is actually slower than the rate of disappearance up here. This is more steep. And you could do the calculations because, see, the, the numerator would be maybe something like, instead of 0.5, the difference is, I don't know, 0.2. Okay, so if the difference was 0 0.2, 0 0.2 divided over 20 seconds, what is that rate? 0 0.2 divided by 20, ah, negative, because, uh, whoops, that should be a negative, because you're losing concentration, losing molarity. 0 0.01, I'll give another couple of significant figures, molarity per second. So look at that rate versus the first 20 seconds. Do you see how we're disappearing, H2 is disappearing at a slower rate, at a slower rate, further along in the reaction? So there's a couple of things that I want to jot down before moving on to the next topic of the video. What we notice from that graph and from those numbers is that rate changes, or specifically decreases. So now I'm just looking at the absolute value, okay, 0 0.010 versus 0 0.025. Okay. The absolute value of this is bigger than this, so the rate is bigger. In this case, the rate of disappearance. So the rate changes specifically decreases over time. It's not constant. In many cases, it's not constant. In some cases it is, but in most cases it is not constant. And in most cases, rate depends on what time interval you are studying. Are you studying the first 20 seconds, or are you studying 20 seconds in the middle of the reaction? What time interval is being Next topic, call this B. Let's go over expressing reaction rates. Let's pick up that equation again, H2O2 plus, actually we have a new equation, H2O2 plus 3I minus plus 2H plus goes to I2 minus plus 2H2O. Very interesting equation. We have different coefficients. Now consider this statement, and we're going to draw conclusions from this one statement. For every one mole 
of H2O2 and we'll use the word consumed. How do the other chemicals change? For every one mole H2O2 consumed, how many moles of I are consumed? Three moles of I minus are consumed. Did you see that? For every one mole of H2O2 that is used up, we have to use up three moles of I. That is the stoichiometry. We've done that many times before. Two moles of H plus are consumed. Okay. Now, when we looked at the graph and we graphed the consumption of reactants, remember we noticed that the delta of the concentration of each of these of the, each of the reactants would be negative, negative, negative. But what do you also notice about these three statements? They are consumed at different rates. The rate is not the same for, for them. They are consumed or they disappear at different rates. In fact, you could say that I minus disappears three times faster. Faster than what? Faster than H2O2. Let's look at it from the other side now. For every one mole of H2O consumed, one mole of I... Is that I2? No, that is I3. Can't read my handwriting. I3. For every one mole of H2O consumed, one mole of I3 minus is what? Is produced. And, and two moles of H2O is produced as well. These delta concentrations for the products are going to be positive. Going to be positive. And again, the rate of production of the two products differ from each other. You could say that H2O is produced twice as fast. And that's just understanding how to use these coefficients. It's produced two times as fast. It, that means what? Twice as fast, right? Two times as fast, it's faster than I3 minus. Okay. Let me give you some numbers now. This is where it gets a little bit tricky. If I say the rate of reaction it's tricky because what we are doing here, we are discussing the rate of product produced and the rate of reactant consumed. But here I'm saying the rate of the reaction. And I'll sh tell you how to think about that in just a bit. What if it's 4.40 times 10 to the minus 3 molarity per second? Think of it this way. Think of this statement as this. That for one mole of reaction, when you run one mole of reaction, it is the same rate, or this number, right here, is the same rate for a product if it has one as its coefficient. It's kind of a weird way to put things, but 
If I say the rate of reaction is 4.40 times 10 to the minus 3 molarity per second, that is the same as saying that the rate of appearance of I3 minus is 4.40 times 10 to the minus 3 molarity per second. So we could say the rate, because that product has a coefficient of 1. It, co it correlates with the mole of reaction. One mole of reaction produces one mole of this product. So one mole of reaction, if it has a rate of that, it's the same as the rate of appearance of I3 minus. It equals 4.40 times 10 to the minus 3 molarity per second. So now let's think very carefully. Let's take a look at what we know for a fact that the rate of I3 appearance, okay, well, water appears twice as fast. We, we know that. Forget about this number. We know that from the stoichiometry, water appears twice as fast or is produced twice as fast. What is twice as fast as 4.40? The rate of appearance of H2O equals 2 times 4.40 times 10 to the minus 3 molarity per second. The rate of disappearance of, let's say, H2O2, it has a coefficient of 1. So the rate of disappearance of H2O2 is equal to 4.40 times 10 to the minus 3 molarity per second. Why don't I have a negative here? I explicitly say that it's disappearing, so that takes care of the negative sign. Now, if I ask for the delta change in concentration, that would be negative. It would be negative 4.40 times 10 to the minus 3. That's the delta change. But if I just literally say disappearance, it is losing that much H2O2 at this rate. What about for I minus? See, the coefficient is 3. It's being lost at three times as fast, three times faster than H2O2. So this would equal 3 times 4.40. Are you seeing a pattern? I hope you're seeing a pattern. And H plus equals the rate of disappearance equals 2 times 4.40 times 10 to the minus 3 molarity per second. Again, by understanding what these coefficients mean and being able to make this correlation then you can work with numbers so the tricky part is the tricky part is what if I am given the rate of disappearance of H2O2 or the rate of disappearance of I minus what would be the rate of reaction well we would just work backwards okay and we will do that in a problem in the next video so what I've talked about in this video, there's a lot. Um, it's, there's a lot to digest, but the best way to solidify you know, these concepts, especially applying these concepts to problems and using actual data, actual data, the best way to have that solidify is to apply this to a problem. In the next video, I will be doing this problem right here. Same reaction, and now we're working with data. Okay, and from that data, we're asking what is the average rate of this reaction? That is, you know, this term here, rate of reaction. But from that rate of reaction, I'll show you the math to get the rate of disappearance and appearance for each of these components. Okay, right now we're not really applying an equation, right? A, a mathematical equation. We're just using intuition. Intuition based off of our statements up here. Okay, I will see you in the next video and we will now apply these concepts into some computational problems.